what I've done here, I've set the rotary table up on the Cincinnati. I've got to put three holes in here, 120 degrees apart, um, three threaded holes, which lock this plate on here, or lock the cap in, which in turn locks this in there as well. It's M3 tapped. I'm going to have to spin this back up in the lathe now just to deburr this inner portion. To lock this all together and make sure this big ring is tight, I'm going to push it together with the tailstock. It's tight. It's all going to come back off again when I go to do the gear teeth, but that's beside the point because I'll have to hold it on this diameter here. Anyway, that's another job out of the way. So we've got a bit of a rain event going on here at the moment, and therefore they've actually put warnings out for flood. Or well, yeah, flood watch around here, so anyway, that's gonna be the noise in the background. What we have to make here is this ratchet wheel. Um a 70 degree angle or 70 degree tooth if you want to call it that i've rattled my brain for days and days and days over this anyway i was speaking to max from the swan valley machine shop and he pointed me in the right direction uh, big thanks to max i made one out of aluminium off camera obviously to see if i can do it anyway i've made a blank up um, that was just straight turn, a 65mm diameter, it's got a 40mm boss on it, it's just a washer holding it, yeah, it's on a mandrel, so I can go straight in the rotary table. So, I've done it with a 60 degree dovetail cutter and a 60 degree countersink, so that's the two, two tools I've used to make this, this one here. Um, if you follow me Instagram, you'll see a picture of it up there yeah, with this aluminium gear on it and it matches up fine so I think it'll be right. Um, just doing this one here in steel, it's going to be a lot slower going 
I'm just going to take light cuts because I haven't got another dovetail cutter before I play this one. Anyway, we'll get into it. I'll probably time lapse a fair bit of this. I don't know. It's going to be slow going. Okay, this initial or the first stage, I'll be using the Y axis and I'll be f um, feeding in a total of 5mm at the end. I'm doing that in stages. Like I say, it's the only cutter I've got and I don't want to screw it. So it's going to take a while to go around now. It's 15 teeth on this, so it's six full turns of the um, rotary table um, on any number hole pattern. The DRO is all set. So I'll just see how this goes, this cutter. See what it happens, see what happens. You're probably all saying you've been a bit of a push, you know, go a bit harder. It's only a cheap import dovetail cutter, but it wasn't an expensive one. Um, and I just I don't want to screw it because I've got haven't got another one, so I'm taking light cuts. So that's two done, and I'll get the rest of these done. And I'll bring this back when I'm doing the setup for the next for the second stage take a while but I mean no hurry That's the first stage done. So they're all at 60 degree and now I've got to make these back angles here to 70. What I do is I rotate the table 10 degrees on the scale on the back of the um, on, on the you know the one there on the table. Um, then I read just by eye how I've done the last the aluminium one is pick up this bottom corner it's up the point with pick up the bottom corner and then machine this side off again it's probably not the right way to do it it's definitely probably not the right way to do it but I'm no good at mathematics I don't know how else to work it out and I don't have a 70 degree cutter so the cutter's actually holding up pretty good for an import cutter. <laughs> Surprised it hasn't blown to bits. So I'm going to rotate the table 10 degrees. set this handle so it's back up on this mark works out that the handles directly in line pretty much close enough there goes the torch so now what I've got to do is line this cutter back up on the with the root of the the tooth which takes a bit of fiddling around so the way I've done this just use a scale lined up at the root of that corner 
Now the first, the first tooth I do, I'll be able to set the DRO to my end stop um, on how far I come in. Now this cut is going to be pretty much taking a full swipe of this edge. Um, then I've got to come in with the counter sink to take the top little notch off. This will give me the 70 degrees. I've got to swap the handle around, that's what I've got to do. Swapping the handle around, it's not necessary, it just makes it easier instead of trying to line the hole up at the bottom because it's six full turns and just line it back up at the top. Back on the mark here. That's it. Do that another 15 times and we'll be right over. Here goes the torch again. Um, yeah, so you got the gist of what I've done there. Now it does leave a little kit up the top, which I'll knock off with the countersink. Anyway, keep managing along. That worked out good and the, the, that cutter held up real well considering that's just a cheap was less than ran, ran 20 bucks from memory it was just cheap as crap off eBay um, I do reckon that coolant's got a lot to do with saving that tool um, I've noticed that a fair bit on all my end mills since I've been running that that 50-30 coolant it's, that's good so as you see now it's got a little tit up the top I've got to knock it off if I had a bigger um, dovetail cutter I wouldn't have to worry about it but I'm just going to knock that tit off the top now I'll do that with the 60 degree countersink I've just done this one just to get the numbers right and to be honest with you I could do it a touch more I think Index around, do the direct the other four, don't of them.
there we go that's done a little bit of hand work with the file now just to deburr it and uh, mission accomplished worked out pretty darn good just out of curiosity Fitting now up right. It'll work. Radio, I've done a bit of a mock up here. You can see the angle didn't turn out too bad. I don't know the light's pretty crap here. See if I can fix that. A bit better. Pretty happy with that. It's got clearance all the way around. Almost class that as a win. Pretty happy about that. Okay, so this project now has come to a bit of a standstill. I have ordered the gear cutters to cut the gear on this one and the gear on this shaft. How long they're going to be to turn up, I don't know. Um, I ordered them last night. Finally found a place I could buy them at a reasonable price and not, yeah, not have to mortgage ours. This needs more paint. I ran out of paint. It just needs another coat. Um, apart from cutting these two gears, we've pretty much made everything. Um, it's just a matter of assembling it once I get them cut and work out whether I'm putting a wire rope or a strap so yeah, we'll shelve this for, for a week or so hopefully it won't be too long until I get the cutters and as soon as they turn up I'll be getting right back into it again so. anyway it's been a good project so far there's plenty of, been, plenty of bits a few challenges but it should be a good a good hand winch when we've done when it's when it's finished i'm absolutely stoked with that never thought i'd ever be able to make something like that <laughs>